Dr. Yaakov Shatsky describes the beginnings of Jewish community in Częstochowa in those words, in the Częstochowa Itzka books. It is difficult to establish when Jews actually settled in Częstochowa. The first mention of Jewish matters concerning the city relates to the Frankist movement, when Jacob Frank, 1726-1791, was convicted of blasphemy in a rabbinical court in 1760, he was sent to Częstochow. He was imprisoned in the fortress there for 13 years, until the Russian general Bibikov who captured the fortress freed him. Then Dr. Shatsky in the Itzke book goes into the description of large numbers of followers of Jacob Frank who settled in Częstochowa, but most likely this movement dispersed. One thing is sure, by 1760s there is already a synagogue established, this building is renovated and refurbished in late 1800s, the last renovation was in the later 20s under the careful eye of Professor Peretz Willenberg. It was the eastern district of Częstochowa that became the Jewish district, but also the place of very rapid 1800s industrialization. The city grew. In mid-1800s it was located on the major international rail system. Central location, the vicinity of German border in 1800s, but also good transportation changed Częstochowa very fast into a modern city with modern city planning and great hopes for the future. In the same time, the Jewish population is growing rapidly as most of the poorer merchants or tradesmen from the nearby towns and communities are starting to come massively to the city. Most of those economic immigrants are starting their careers from those very eastern edges of the city. The district of poverty, the district of industrialization, the district of proletariat at the time, but mixed also with a fastly growing Jewish religious community and two synagogues plus a couple of dozens of shtibels and prayer houses. On the other western edge of the city is the Paulin monks monastery with the holy picture of Black Madonna, a site of pilgrimage. The industrialization and opportunities of trading within Russia brings also to Częstochowa a certain number of German Jews. Those are coming with the ideas of Haskalah, so the modernity into religious education and also religious practice. In late 1800s there is a society established and funds are being collected for the construction of a new synagogue in the city. For many years this building will become the most prominent and the most characteristic in the skyline of Częstochowa. The new reformed synagogue, often called the Deutsche Schule, unfortunately this classical building did not survive World War II and later communist time period, right now the plot of land is constructed with the Częstochowa Philharmonic. Jewish cemetery of Częstochowa is located about 3 kilometers east from the city center on the other side of the Vata river along Zwota street and it's surrounded or it's in the very middle 
of the large industrial complex of Huta Częstochowa, the Częstochowa Steelworks. This cemetery in its pre-war borders was established in the year of 1808 and became the burial place for the growing Jewish community of Częstochowa independently from Janov, which was the first Kahila supervising this territory. The cemetery is a testimony to the diversity and richness of Jewish life that once existed in the Częstochowa. in Częstochowa today and about to enter the Jewish cemetery in Częstochowa. Częstochowa Jewish community has a rather short but incredibly large and creative history because Częstochowa as a city next to the monastery mostly under the influence of the Częstochowa Poland monks was from the very early stages of its existence using the privilege of non tolerandis idearis, or non toleration for the Jews. This has only changed in the very late of 1700s. We know that in 1700s there are already some Jews that are inhabiting the old town of Częstochowa. One of them is actually holding a large part of the city in his pocket, so the city is in debt to a certain moisture and for this reason he is tolerated to reside in the city center in the old town. But in reality it was only the turn of 17 and 1800s when the rules are changing first briefly into the Prussian occupation and the Prussian control and then into the Russian control which is the Hova is becoming part of Tsarist Russia from early 1800s. So this is lifting all of the earlier medieval regulations and a community can start to build itself. This is the time when all of the nearby shtetls uh, are overflowing with surpluses of population and throughout 1800s most of those people who cannot find any kind of economic uh, conditions to live in the shtetls are moving into the bigger, more industrialized cities. And yes, Częstochowa was a city which was uh, sitting on a rail line from mid-1800s and uh, it uh, became a magnet for all those who were economically deprived in the smaller places, both Christians and Jews. So we know that by mid-1800s Częstochowa already has, well, close to 60% of Jewish population. Uh, then the number drops into about 20% and it stays like this up until World War II. In the 20s and 30s uh, there is uh, about 25, 26 thousands of Jews in Częstochowa. This number is growing very rapidly during the German Nazi occupation when one of the central ghettos in Silesia is created in Częstochowa and at times the number of Jews in Częstochowa ghetto is reaching the number of 40, 48 thousand. And this is of course after relocation of all the smaller Jewish communities. But we are right now entering the Jewish cemetery in Częstochowa, which uh, is not that old. It's, it was established in the early 1800s, just as the community came here. Uh, before early 1800s, the Jews of Częstochowa were burying the dead ones in Janów. And uh, we are right now in the central part of this cemetery. The cemetery was obviously used up until the war and beyond the war. Uh, the official last burial as well were still here in the 1970s. In the year of 1970 it was officially closed for burial purposes, but uh, we know that there were some burials continuing here. It was also in the 70s when a work of a local historian 
an indexer of this of the cemetery started. Unfortunately, the original Hever Kadisha records and death records and uh, organization of the cemetery papers did not survive, so it had to be re-registered. And it was a very hard work, because we are talking about the third largest Jewish cemetery in Poland. After Łódź and Warsaw, this is the third one. This is a little bit over 20 acres of land. And uh, re-registration of this one meant going from stone to stone. Mr. Paszkowski did this work first. Then in the 90s came Benjamin Yari, who re-registered it once more. And then there was a very interesting Israeli school historical project called Gidonim, which is right now having a huge database, uh, fully searchable. Uh, you can cross-reference the actual location where you are in the cemetery to the database and actually find a grave, find the stone of those who were buried here in 1800s or the 20s and 30s. We are right now in a central kind of a square in the middle of the cemetery, a place which is also central for the heritage of Częstochowa Jews in all kinds of ways. But this cemetery is also a holocaust site. This piece of lime rock wall in 1941, 42 and 43 was very often used by the German Nazis for executions. Especially, we are right now entering into the plot of land where the victims of the so-called small Częstochowa ghetto are buried. It also pays tribute to those who were employed, of course, in Hasak, because they were left in the Częstochowa ghetto after the massive deportations of September and October of 1942 into Treblinka, where over 30,000 of Częstochowa Jews were deported to their deaths to be murdered in Treblinka. But those couple of thousands that were staying behind, actually over 10,000 of those that were staying behind were employed in different factories. The largest and the best known one was Hasak Peltry. Uh, but them being kept alive meant that very regularly there were selections, people were escorted to the cemetery just to be shot and buried here. Then in 1943, the small ghetto is also liquidated. During this liquidation, there's a revolt, there's an uprising, which lasts for the four days uh, of young, mostly Bundes, fighting. <laughs> Sometimes working at the Jewish cemetery is less a work of a historian or a genealogist, but it unexpectedly, or expectedly, changes into a work of an archaeologist. Luckily, the Shasthofa Jewish cemetery, in spite of the fact that the original cemetery uh, records did not survive, Luckily, this cemetery of the last 20 years was re-registered a couple of times. First time by a local historian named Paszkowski, then Benjamin Yari, and finally the Gidonim project of Israeli high schools re-registered the graves. And thanks to the work of all of those people, it's even possible to unearth right now a grave which was toppled over. And this one obviously belongs to Naftali Handwerker, who lived within 1850, 
1904 to 1935. He was buried in October of 1935. And he is the son of Berek. In September 1939, Czestochowa has close to 30,000 of Jewish inhabitants. The German army is entering the city already on September 3rd. On September 4th, they are organizing a Bloody Monday a system of reprisals and massacres. The great synagogues are destroyed in Christmas. Of Regulations and terror intensifies. In spring of 1941, the German Nazis are establishing the ghetto district in this eastern edge of the city. In late September of 1942, the German Nazis are starting the large deportation action with a couple of swiftly organized operations. Close to 40,000 of Czestochowa Jews are forced into the cattle cars and shipped over a distance of 350 kilometers northeast towards the death camp of Treblinka. Only a couple of thousands of Jews are left in a small ghetto and treated as a compulsory slave labor, mostly in the large number of Hasak enterprises in Częstochowa. This map of small ghetto marks Koja Street. Let's give it a look of what is left in this eastern edge of the city. This used to be the district of Jewish poverty. Everything south of uh, Warszawska Street was always understood as a district of poverty. The more affluent people lived in the north or in the avenues of the Holy Mary itself. This district obviously was converted by the German Nazis into the ghetto. We are right now standing on the rubbles of what used to be not only the ghetto but also the small ghetto. So the area into which the Częstochowa ghetto was shrunk after the major deportation of Częstochowa Jews in September-October of 1942. So we are somewhere at the crossroad of uh, Kozia and Sanatorska street in Częstochowa. This part of the city is extremely patchy. You can still see the original cobblestone on the street. But somewhere in the background you can see the commonest blocks of flats from the 50s then a block of flats from the 60s then somewhere here the rubbles of the small ghetto houses in July of 1943 there was a final liquidation of the small ghetto 
pretty much this entire district was raided by the units of German and Ukrainian police. And somewhere in between those courtyards and original streets there are still the houses from a turn of 18-1900s which were nothing else but the ghetto houses so we are right now making it into Warszawska street which for 150 years was always understood as a certain economical divide in the city of Częstochowa Everything south of Warszawska was poverty, everything north of Warszawska was middle class and more affluent. So we are in the very city center of Częstochowa, yet we are standing in a street which does not exist. We are standing on Koja Street, which was the very center of a small ghetto into which the Częstochowa ghetto was reduced after the big deportations of September-October 1942. Here you can see the rubbles of the houses which were making Koja Street and they are no longer. In uh, late June of 1943, this small ghetto with five to six thousands of Jews who were still living here because they were employed mostly in various Hasak enterprises in Częstochowa was brutally attacked by the Germans in order to be liquidated. The Nazis were destroying building by building. There was an armed res resistance. So the structures of the underground were already taking shape in late 1942 after the big liquidation of the ghetto and reduction into this small area encircled in Nadzeczna, Mostowa, Koja, Senatorska Street. The first leader of it was uh, Adam Wolberg, but he was killed by the Nazis in early of 1943. And then the leadership of the underground organization and then of the uprising in late June of 1943 was in the hands of Mordechai Zilberberg. He was murdered in one of the bunkers towards Nadzeczna Street, more or less where we are heading, which was a parallel street to Koja Street. So the street in the form of cobblestone is still here, but in reality the street is no longer. <laughs> 